So we talked in the other videos about all of the wiring that had to happen on the digital side of the switch. Um, it's because all, all the frames inside the switch talk to each other uh, through digital uh, communication channels. Um, it's a digital switch, that's what it sort of does natively. Um, but all of the customers' phones, those are still analog. Um, and so as we progress in wiring up the switch, we now need to wire those phones, we need to wire all the kind of supporting infrastructure around the actual customer lines themselves. And those, that infrastructure lives mostly in these two frames here. So this is the biggest part of the customer-facing analog circuitry. Uh, this is the line concentrating equipment. And each one of these drawers is filled with the line cards. And each customer has one line card dedicated just to their phone line. Um, and that's the interface between the analog signal coming from their phone and the digital switching that the DMS-10 does. So we already wired up the digital side of this interface, uh, but uh, up until recently, we hadn't touched the analog part of that. So up here in the cable tray, this is all of the analog line wiring that's attached to the LCE bay. Um, there's just like tons of this stuff because there's up to a thousand customers that could be wired to this frame. And so all of those lines need to go somewhere. So the right way to wire all of these lines in is to connect them to the main distributing frame, the, M the MDF. Um, this is a piece in every central office where all of the customers' analog lines come into the building, they go through the cable bolt, they connect to the MDF, and that's where that's where they're cross-connected to the different to the various telephone switches that might be in that office. We have a small MDF, but it's on the other floor of the building, and that's a long way to run cables just to bring them back here to connect to phone lines. Uh, so we needed a way to connect this all together um, without having to have the full MDF involved. So it turned out that we had another good way, another good option for doing all the analog wiring, which was to use this cabinet here that we use as part of a display of uh, design line telephones, um, but it has a big sort of empty space in it that we can fill with terminal blocks. And it's uh, just close enough to the DMS-10 that the cables coming off of it, off the DMS-10 are just long enough to reach to the terminal blocks that we want to install inside of this display cabinet. Uh, so that worked out just perfectly uh, for us to be able to wire those in inside of this cabinet. So this is inside of that cabinet where we're starting to install all of these cables from the DMS and wire them onto the terminal blocks. Um, so we've mounted a few here already. Uh, so these two blocks are from the peripheral equipment bay, and that's for doing the analog testing. Uh, we have a space here where we'll install some more, and then this terminal block is where we're connecting the actual phones that we're going to use on the DMS-10. Um, and we'll add more of these as necessary, but you can see all of the cabling work that's, uh, that has to be done to connect this together. So these blocks, they're, they're two-sided, and they flip up and down. And the way you do this is that the rear side is where you connect to the switch itself. So this is just all the wiring for the different uh, cards in the PE bay. And then the front is where you connect everything that wants to talk to those particular uh, pieces of equipment. So here uh, we have a few jumpers that need to go between different cards in the PE bay um, and in the telephone lines. Uh, the block with the telephone lines will actually wire the telephones to the front of this and the cables in the back will go to the DMS-10 itself. Yeah, so in this, like, all of this block up from here to all the way over here is an entire shelf of uh, peripheral equipment. Uh, this is basically four and a half cards worth of wires, of which we needed that many. <laughs> That is, that is two pair. Uh, so in the peripheral equipment frame, this does 
uh, much of the uh, testing on lines and trunks. It also contains some trunks. It used to contain lines in older versions of the frame. Uh, we have a couple of trunks in here. Uh, none of the lines are in here, but all the testing for lines still is. Uh, so the bits we needed to make this machine uh, work at least briefly were uh, the peripheral maintenance access, which is where the frame that does have lines connects in here and gets wh whichever circuit, whichever customer's line we're trying to test into the testing framework. Uh, we also, so that then gets into the line and trunk test, uh, which does kind of what it says on the tin. It tests lines or trunks. Uh, other kinds of tests, if we need to do voltmeters, uh, capacitance resistance testing, uh, that is done in the facility test pack, uh, which is unfortunately in the other row, and we'll get to why that is important shortly. Uh, but this is, this has basically a voltmeter in it, and the operator can test that. So this is mostly all just test sauce um, of test and access sauce. Yeah, we have we have access sauce, which gets you under the wires. We have and we have test sauce in these first first three uh, cards of both both bays. So this is working now. Can you take us through what a test would look like or? Yeah, so we can test someone's line pack, uh, which is the one piece of this equipment that's dedicated to that particular customer. Uh, sorry, this is in peripheral equip. This is in peripheral equipment diagnostics. Because uh, this is the PE frame, so we have the PED tool to, to basically use it. Uh, so if we test someone's line pack, so this is actually one of the phones we have hooked up. So this will take that line pack off uh, circuit. Now it's switched it into the testing. It's done all the testing on that now. And very shortly, It passed its test. So before we got this testing frame working, what was happening is an automated job would run through this and the line packs would fail its test because the line pack, the side of the machine connected to the line packs and the side of the machine connected to these testing facilities didn't touch each other. So the automated job would say, oh, this line pack failed its test, I guess we gotta kick that customer out right now. So basically as fast as I could make things return to service, it would be like, uh, nope, that system made busy, which is the, the state for, all right, I've detected an automated failure behind your back. One moment. So I'll go to, if I can type, uh, trunk and loop test. So we'll test 890.005 and we can wait for its state. It's four because it's zero numbered. There we go. Okay, so let's try, let's test the right phone this time. 890004. So this is the subscriber that we have. Let's wait. Off hook. On hook. So that works. And whoops. I accidentally killed the program. We've Okay, and Collect some digits. And for some reason I started at two, so DTMF works. 
Uh, what else can I test on this? I don't know, unhook, off of the digits are pretty much it for a phone. <laughs> so. Uh, it was this one that you wanted, wanted yeah. to try? Yeah. More telephone noteworthy. Cool. Dial tone? Dial tone? Hello! Hi, I've been trying to reach you about your car's extended warranty. Oh no! <laughs> it works! <laughs> I don't know if it still works. I need to hang up. Okay, let me try the other way. 810 Hello? Okay, sweet. Okay. Yay!